Hello viewers at home. You are welcome to my lecture on IES 10 events after the reporting period. In this lecture, I will explain how to classify events into adjusting events and non-adjusting events. I will equally solve examination questions. IAS 10 events after the reporting period events after the reporting period before i explain the events after the reporting period i would like to explain what is meant by reporting date number one reporting date reporting date reporting date is the date in which the financial statement is presented. The date in which the financial statement is presented is said to be the reporting date. The balance sheet date, that is the statement of financial position date of an entity, is said to be the reporting date. That is the date in which the financial statement is presented. Take for instance, if you have SYZ Limited, Statement of profit or loss for the year ended. 31st December 2020. So the reporting date of XYZ Limited is 31st December 2020. This is the reporting date. The date in which the financial statement is presented. If it is statement of financial position, we are going to have it as XYZ Limited statement of financial position as at December 31st or uh, 31st December 2020. The reporting date is December 31st. The date in which the date in which the financial statement is presented, that is the reporting date. The date in which the financial statement is presented is said to be the reporting date. The second one is authorization date. Authorization date. Authorization date is the date in which the financial statement is legally authorized for issuance by the directors. The date in which the financial statement is legally authorized. The date in which financial statement is legally authorized for issuance by the director is said to be the authorization date. Now, events, if, take for instance, the reporting date of an entity is December 31st, 2020, and the financial statement may be authorized for issuance in March, March, let me say March 31st, 2021. No, the reporting date is 31st December 2020, and the financial statement is authorized for issuance on 31st of December of March 2021. Therefore, any event that occurred between December 31st 2020 and March 31st 2021 is said to be the event after the reporting date. Any event between December 31st, that means any event that occur as of January 1st to January 31st, then February 1st to February 28th, and March 1st to March 31st. Any event occurring between this period is said to be the event after the reporting period. Events after the reporting period. So, what do we mean by events after the reporting 
reporting period. I've told you that they are the events that occurred between the end of the reporting period and the date the financial statement is authorized for issuance. Any events that occurred between the end of the reporting period and the date the financial statement is authorized for issuance is said to be the events after the reporting period. That is, events between the end of the reporting days, date and the authorization date. Before the, between the end of the reporting date and the authorization date, that event, any event that occurred between those periods is said to be the events after the reporting period. This event shall be categorized into two. We have adjusting event, adjusting events, and we also have no adjusting events. Events after the reporting period can be categorized into two. One, we have adjusting events. Two, we have no adjusting events. What do we mean by adjusting events? The first one is adjusting events. That is, any event that required adjustment in the financial statement is said to be an adjusting event. Adjusting events are the events that required adjustment in the financial statements. Adjusting events are the events that provide evidence of conditions that existed at the reporting period. Any event that provide evidence, that provide the evidence of the condition that existed at the reporting period is said to be the adjusting event. Meaning that before you can say this event is an adjusting event, it must evidence the condition in existence at the reporting period. Where that event doesn't provide evidence of the condition in existence at the reporting period, so they should not be categorized or classified as an adjusting event. So, I've told you that events that provide evidence of the condition in existence at the reporting period, meaning that that condition will have been in existence at the reporting period before you can categorize them as an adjusting event. Example of adjusting events. Example of adjusting events. We have one. We have debtor goes back five days after the statement of financial position date. Debtors goes bad five days after the statement of financial position date. If the debtor goes back five days after the financial position date, that means the debtor has gone back at the financial statement date, that is, as, per, uh, as uh, the statement of financial position date. If the debtor goes back five days after the statement of financial position date, that's to show that it, it, the debtor has already gone back. The debtor has gone back at the statement of financial position date. Number two, inventory is sold at loss two weeks after the statement of financial position date. Inventory. Inventory is sold at a loss two weeks after the statement of financial position date. Inventory is sold at a loss two weeks after the statement of financial position date. That evidences that the inventory reported or recognized in the statement of financial position was or were not measured at the lower of cost or net realizable value in accordance with IES 2. 
you know, IS2 required the inventory to be measured at the lower of cost or net realizable value. And where inventory is sold at a loss, that means the, en the entity did not recognize the lower of the cost or net realizable value. That is why the losses were incurred just two ways after the statement of financial position. So that is an adjusting event. Pro property was impaired after number three, property was impaired. Property was impaired two ways after the statement of financial position date. Property was impaired two weeks after the statement of financial position date. IS 36 required that the amount at which property or assets should be recognized should not be more than its recoverable amount. Meaning that if this property has been tested for impairment, this impairment will have been discovered in the financial period and will have been written off in the statement of in the financial statement. Therefore, the impairment loss which was discovered two weeks after the statement of financial position evidences or shows that the property has been impaired in the financial period. So that is an adjusting event. Then number four, the discovery of error or fraud in the in the year. The discovery, the discovery of errors or fraud in the year. The errors or fraud that were discovered that had occurred in the year but was discovered between the reporting date and authorization date is an adjusting event. It shows the evidence that that errors has been committed in the financial period or in the reporting date. The number five, we have results or court case confirming the company did have a present obligation at the year end. The result of a court case, the result of a court case confirming 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 the company the company did have a present did have a present obligation obligation at the year end this is an adjusting event adjusting events the second category or classification is no adjusting event no adjusting event number two we have no adjusting events no adjusting events so what do we mean by no adjusting events these are the events after the reporting days which concern the condition that arose after the reporting date they are the events after the reporting date which concern the condition that arose after the reporting date. They concern the condition that arose after the reporting date, but they did not provide evidence of the condition in existence at the reporting date. This event occurred after the reporting uh, after the reporting date and the authorization date. It's fall between the reporting date and authorization date, but they did not provide additional evidence. They did not provide evidence of the condition 
in existence at the reporting date. Not adjusting event do not give evidence of conditions at the year end. They only affect the position after the year end. Not adjusting event do not give evidence of the conditions at the year end. They only affect the position after the year end. They only affect the position after the year end, but they do not give any evidence of the condition in existence at the year end. Examples of non adjusting events. Examples of non adjusting events. Number one, we have inventory were sold at a loss. Inventory, inventories were sold at a loss at a loss because they were damaged after the giant at a loss because because they were damaged damaged after the giant during the reporting date there was no condition. No one suspected that there will be any damages to the inventory. That means the condition that is damage was not in existence at the reporting date. So it's damage. The reason why it was sold at a loss was because they were damaged. So and the entity never knew the inventory will damage during the reporting period. So this is not adjusting event. Property number two, property was impaired due to a fall in the market value after the year end. Property was impaired due to a fall in the market value. In the market value after the year end nobody suspected that there will be a fall in the market value of the property during the year or during the reporting period or in the reporting period nobody suspected the fall in the market value just arose during the year so since they didn't suspect that nobody was of the opinion or view that the market value of the property will fall. So that is not adjusting event. So that fall in the market value was not in the existence, was not in existence in the reporting period. Number three, the acquisition or disposal of subsidiary post year end. The acquisition or disposal of the subsidiary of the subsidiary in the year end so the acquisition and and disposal of the subsidiary that condition was not in existence in, in the financial period therefore it is not adjusting event number four the destruction of asset by fire post year end. The destruction of the assets by fire post year end. Post year post year end. Um, also call this one post year end. So, or after the year end, the destruction of the asset by fire post year end. Nobody knew that the asset will be destroyed by fire in the financial period. So that event arose after the reporting period. So it is not adjusting event. Dividend declared after the year end. Dividend declared 
after the year end. This just arose, does not affect the condition in existence in the financial period. So it is not adjusting event. A major business combination after the reporting date. A major business combination after the reporting date. A major business combination after after the reporting date. This is a transaction that occurs after the reporting date. The condition that brings about that transaction was not in existence in the financial year or in the reporting date. So it is not adjusting event. Abnormal large changes in the asset prices after the reporting date. Abnormal large changes in the asset prices after the reporting date is a non-adjusting event. So I've given the example of adjusting events and non-adjusting events. So I want to give you the, the procedures or how to identify the events after the reporting period. How will you know when an event is an event after the reporting period or not? Or how will you know when it is an adjusting event or non-adjusting events? Identification of the events after the reporting date. Identification of the events after the reporting, reporting period. Identification of the events after the reporting period. I want to give you the steps to follow. The step number one, you identify, identify the reporting date, the reporting date. That is the first step. You identify the reporting date. Step two, identify the authorization date. Identify identify the authorization authorization date you identify the reporting date and then the authorization date any event that occurred after the reporting date and the authorization date i've told you that they will be regarded as an event or as the events after the reporting period any events that occur after this period, then will be regarded as the events. Events that occur after the reporting date and that last within the authorization date will be regarded as the event after the reporting period. Step three, establish whether the events provide any additional evidence of the condition at the reporting date. Establish whether the event event provide evidence evidence of the conditions in existence in existence in the reporting in the reporting period where the event provide evidence of the condition in existence in the reporting period, then you categorize that as an additional event, uh, as adjusting event. Where it provides evidence of the conditions in existence during the reporting period, you categorize that as the adjusting event. And where it doesn't provide evidence of condition in existence in the reporting period, we categorize it as non-adjusting events. So adjusting events, I've told you, it should be, a, it should be a, the financial statement will be adjusted. Where you have adjusting events, you will need to adjust your financial statement to accommodate the effect of that event. That is for adjusting events. There are no adjusting events 
You only disclose it by the way of note. No adjusting event should be disclosed by the way of note. It should be disclosed with the note to the financial statement where the amount involved is significant to the entity. No adjusting event should be disclosed in the note where the amount involved is, or the, the events is significant to the entity. So these are the procedures you will need to follow in identifying when events is an adjusting or no adjusting events. So we want to take example. This question one is obtained from ACCA study test by Kaplan. Kaplan ACCA study test. So we have Adamson's year end is 31st December. The year end, that is the reporting date of Adamson, is 31st December. So Adamson. So solution. We have Adamson. So the reporting date. Reporting date is December 31st. So meaning that any event that occur between this date and the date the financial statement is legally authorized for issue, those events will be regarded as events after the reporting period. So the following events all occurred in January. The following events all occurred in January. No, okay, we have st state whether the events below will be classed as an as adjusting or non adjusting events. You have to state whether they should be uh, whether they will be classed or categorized as adjusting events or non adjusting events. So meaning that all the events here occur between December thirty first and January. So we are going to assume that January is the authorization date. So since they fall between the, uh, the reporting date and authorization date. So you want to categorize, that means there are events after the reporting period. So the first item is insolvency of a receivable balance. Receivable, the amount that was shown as receivable. The balance you show as receivable in the statement of financial position. That means that debtors or the receivable has been declared insolvent. So insolvency of a receivable balance. That means insolvency is providing additional evidence of the amount reported in the financial statement as the receivable, as receivables. It, the insolvency of a receivable balance is providing evidence of the amount you have as receivable in the statement of financial position. So therefore, that is an adjusting event. Adjusting event. Number two, loss of inventory due to a flood. Loss of inventory due to a flood. In the financial period, nobody suspected that there will be an occurrence of flood. You never suspected. And in fact, you were not even expecting floods to happen. And it suddenly happened. Therefore, the loss due to a flood is no adjusting event. Since that condition was not in existence. No adjusting events. That is, loss of inventory due to a flood is no adjusting event because you were not expecting the occurrence of flood. So that condition was not in existence in the reporting period. Number three, you have completion of the purchase of another company. The purchase of another company. So that condition was not in existence. Therefore, it is no adjusting event. Number four, evidence showing that the net realizable value of inventory is below cost. Evidence showing that the net realizable value of inventory is below cost. In fact, in accordance with IS2, you may your inventory at lower at the lower cost of net realizable value. And you are not getting the evidence that the amount you have reported, 
the cost you have shown in the financial statement and the net realizable value you have just discovered is below that cost. And in, a, in, a, in compliance with IES, IES 2, you ought to have used the lower of the cost of net realizable value. Since the lower, the net realizable value is lower than the cost you have reported, therefore, your financial statement will need to be adjusted for uh, to accommodate for the effect. Therefore, this is an adjusting event. Adjusting event. Evidence showing that the net realizable value of inventories below cost is an adjusting event. Number five. A court case from August is settled by Andalson. A court case from August is settled by Andalson. This is a court case. And this case has been in existence since August. And your financial year is December 31st. December 31st. And the court case has been in existence since August. So that means that condition has been in existence. So that means you need to make provision in accordance with IES 37. So this is an adjusting event. Since that condition has been in existence since August, that is the financial period. So it is an adjusting event. Adjusting event. So you have to make additional provision for that in accordance with IES 37. Number six, the discovery of fraud. Showing the financial statement were incorrect. You have just discovered the fraud. And that fraud shows that the financial statement were not correct. So, since the fraud has affected the position of the entity, that is to show that it is an adjusting event. So, the notice is also an adjusting event. Adjusting event. So that is all about example one. Example two. Example two, slim PSE draft financial statements for the year ended 31st December 20X19 were finalized on 31st March 20X20. So they finished the financial statement and it is for this period, for the year ended. That is to show that this is the reporting date. This is the day they complete the preparation of the financial statement. So it was finalized as at this date. Approved by finance directors on 10th April 20X20. That is the date it was approved by finance director. Authorized for issue on 30th April 20X20. This is the authorization date. The reporting date is 31st December 20X19 and the authorization date. I've told you that the date the financial statement is legally authorized for issuance is the authorization date. This is the authorization date, 30 April 20X20. And approved by the shareholders on 31st May 20X20. You don't need that. The following events occurred after the end of the reporting period. So you have identified the reporting date and the authorization date. The reporting date is December 31st, 20th, 19th, and the authorization date is started April 20th, 20th. That means any event that occurred as of January 2020, February to April 30th, 2020, will be regarded as the events after the reporting period. Any event that occurred between this date and this date will be regarded as the events after the reporting period. The amounts Assume all the amounts are significant to the entity. One, on 20th April 20th, 20, the directors proposed a dividend of 50 cent to its equity shareholders. Two, Slim PSE received a notification on 21st May 20th, 20 that a customer owing three fifty thousand dollars as at thirty first December twenty X nineteen has gone into liquidation. The financial statements already include a specific provision of one twenty thousand for this customer. Three 
an item of inventory measured at cost for one seventy thousand dollar at thirty first December twenty eighth nineteen was sold on first April twenty eighth twenty for hundred thousand dollar. Four, Sleep PSC was notified on twenty third April twenty eighth twenty that a customer owing three twenty thousand dollar. As of thirty first December twenty nineteen has gone into liquidation, the financial statements already include a specific provision of two hundred thousand dollar for this customer. Five, Slim PSC insurer confirmed on twenty fifth April twenty x twenty that they will pay four hundred thousand dollar for inventories that were destroyed by fire on 20th December 2019. The entity had claimed $820,000 and recognized this as a receivable in the financial statements as at 31 December 2019. Six, a right issue on 17th February 2020 to raise $500,000 for an acquisition of subsidiary required, classify the above into adjusting and non-adjusting events and explain the required accounting treatment. So that is the question. Solution. Solution. Last limb, PLC. The first thing, you identify the reporting date. The reporting, reporting date, and that is December, year in the December 31st, 2019. December 31st, 2019. That is the reporting date. Then the next thing, you identify the authorization date. Authorization date. Authorization date. Authorization date. The authorization date. And you were told April 20x20. Authorized for issue on 30th April 20x20. 30th April 30 20x20. That is the authorization date. That means any event that occur between this period and this period. Is said to be the event after the reporting period. So our focus now is on event that occurred between 31st December 2019 to April 30, 20x20. That is our focus. Now, we want to identify those events. And we want to categorize them into adjusting and non-adjusting events. One, on 20th April 20x20, the director proposed a dividend of 50 cents to its equity shareholders. The condition, that is the dividend proposed, that condition was not in existence in the reporting period. So since the condition attached to the dividend proposed was not in existence in the reporting period, so that is said to be no adjusting event. No adjusting event. No adjusting event. So, now the required accounting treatment for that. So, we say it is not adjusting event. IS 37 requires that dividend proposed should not be recognized in the financial statement. So, dividend proposed should not be recognized in the financial statement in accordance with IES 37. Dividend proposed should not be recognized be recognized in the financial statement statements in accordance with IES 37 provision Provision for contingent liabilities. So provisions. 
so we should not recognize it. So that is for that. Relevant note on the proposed dividend should be provided in the financial statements. So we should provide relevant notes on the dividend proposed proposed should be provided in the financial statements so we should provide relevant notes on dividend proposed that is note one note two Slim PSC received a notification on 21st May 20 X 2020 that a customer owing $350,000 as of 31st December 20 X 19 has gone into liquidation. The financial statements already include the specific provisions of 150,000 for this customer. Slim PLC received notification on 21st May, 20X20. Now, you check your authorization date. Authorization date is April 30, 20X20. That means this transaction occur even after the authorization date. The transaction occur after the April 2020. So, meaning that since it occurred as a, 30, as a 21st May, 2020, which is after the authorization date. That transaction is beyond the scope of IES 10. So it is beyond the scope of IES 10 events after the reporting period. That is beyond the scope of IES 10. So this event is outside the scope of IES 10. Number two, this event is outside the scope of IES 10 events after the reporting period. So it is beyond the scope of IES 10 since it is outside the authorization date. It's outside this period. So it is outside the scope of IES 10. Therefore, the bad debt should be recognized in current year financial statements. The, therefore, the bad debt should be recognized in the current financial statements. So I've told you that transaction is beyond the scope of IES 10. So it is beyond the scope of IES 10. It should therefore be recognized in the current financial statements. Three, an item of inventory measured at cost for $170,000 at 31st December 20th, 2019 was sold on 1st April 20. X20 for 100,000. The sales was made as a 1st of April 20X20. So the authorization date is started of April 2020. It is within the scope of IES 10. So it is an event after the reporting period. So an item of inventory was measured at cost. You know, IES 2 required that inventory should be measured at the lower of cost or net realizable value. And it was measured at cost, but shortly after that, after the year end, so the value it was now sold for hundred thousand. That means the amount recognized was not the lower of cost or neutralizable value. So the amount recognized was overstated. So it was overstated. So that means the evidence is the condition is within the reporting period. So it is an adjusting event. Adjusting event. The condition was inexistent in the reporting period. So it is an adjusting event. IES2 
IS2 required inventory inventories to be mailed to be mailed at the lower of cost or net realizable value recording 170,000 be the cost of the inventory as the inventory in this financial statement shows that the value of the closing inventory was overstated so since inventory figure was overstated in the financial statement an adjustment have to be made to reflect the overstatement of inventory the recording of 170,000 in the financial statement shows that the inventory was overstated the recording of $170,000 in the financial statement in the financial statements statements should show that the inventory figure Inventory's figure was overstated. Was overstated. Since the inventory was overstated, so therefore inventory figure in the financial statement should be reduced by seventy thousand. Therefore, the figure of the inventory inventory inventories in the financial statement statements should be be reduced reduced by seventy thousand dollars that is the difference between the amount which was previously recorded of 170,000 and the realizable value of 100,000. So that is note three. Note four, Slim PSC. Slim PSC was notified on 23rd April 20x20 that a customer owing $320,000 as a 31st December 20x19 has gone into liquidation. The financial statement already includes the specific provisions of $200,000 for this customer. Now, the notification, the customer uh, still was notified on 23rd April, which is still within this scope. So that is to show that it is an event after the reporting period. Was notified on 23rd April 2020 that a customer owing 320,000 as at 31st December 2019 has gone into liquidation. So that means there, this provides additional evidence that the condition was in existence in the reporting period. So the liquidation, that means the customers, uh, the conditions was in existence during the reporting period. That is to show that the four is an adjusting event. Four, adjusting, adjusting event. Since it is an adjusting event, so this provides more up-to-date information about the provision for bad debts that was recognized at the end of the reporting period. It provides more up-to-date information about the baddest that was previously recognized in the reporting period. Okay, this provide provide up to date up to date information about the provision the provision for bad deaths that 
was previously recognized. That was previously recognized. So it provides more out of this. Therefore, the amount that was recognized previously, Slim was okay, was notified on 23rd April 20x20 that the customer owing 320 as at 31st December 20 has gone into liquidation. The financial statement already includes a specific provision of 200,000. That means you have to make additional provision of 120,000, being the difference between 320,000 and 200,000 in order to write up the whole 320,000 since the customer has gone into liquidation. Therefore, therefore, additional provision, additional provision of $120,000, that is the difference between the $320,000 and $200,000 needs to be provided, need to be provided in the financial statement. So that is four. Slim PSC insurer confirmed on 25th April 20x20 that they will pay $400,000 for inventories that were destroyed by destroyed by fire on 20th of December 20x19. The entity had claimed $820,000 and recognized these as receivable in the financial statements as at 31st December 20x19. So, this transaction occurred as at 25th of April, I mean, the claim was the insurer was confirmed. It was confirmed on the 25th of April, and the authorization date is started of April. That is to show that it is an event after the reporting period. Now, this transaction has been recognized as receivables in the financial statement. That means the condition has been in existence before the end of the reporting period, because it has been recognized as a receivable and a provision of a twenty thousand had been made for that for the claims so it shows that the condition have been in existence therefore it is an adjusting event adjusting event so now how should this be treated in the financial statement receivable should be reduced by four twenty thousand because the provision made is in excess a twenty thousand is in excess and the amount agreed to pay by the insurer is 400,000. That means the provision exceeds the amount that the insurance company has agreed to pay. Therefore, we should reduce, a receivable should be reduced by 420,000. Receivables should be reduced by 420,000. 420,000 dollar it should be reduced by four twenty thousand dollar that is the difference between eight hundred and twenty thousand dollar and the four hundred thousand agreed to be paid by the insurance company so end of the reporting period the events have been in existence before the end of the reporting period six a right issue on 17th of February 20x20 to raise $500,000 for an acquisition of subsidiary. Now, a right issue. And this, it was made on 20, 17th of February 20x20. And the authorization date is April 30. So that means that right issue is an event after the reporting period. So, now, it is within the scope of IAS 10 events after the reporting period. So this right issue have not been in existence during the reporting period. It have not been in existence bef uh, before the end of the reporting period. Therefore, it is not adjusting event. The condition have not been in existence before the end of the reporting period. So it is not adjusting event.
no adjusting events no adjusting event so now this should be disclosed by the way of note it should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statements since it constitutes a significant transaction to the entity it should be be disclosed it should be dis disclosed It should, it should be disclosed in the note to the financial statements. Statements. Since it constitutes, since it constitutes a significant transaction. transaction to the entity that is the solution to example two please try to subscribe to the channel subscribe to the channel so that we will continue to receive notification each time i drop any videos